Hi, this is Leonie from Spines and Splines. Today I'm going to show you how to wrap a gift and I'm going to be wrapping mine with some very cheap, very basic newsprint paper that I'm about to decorate with colourful stamps. My sheets of paper measure around 50 by 70 centimetres and I'll be joining two of them together to wrap my parcel. You can decorate your paper in any way you want to and you can use any large format paper you like. Brown craft paper is particularly good, but newsprint is what I have for now, so it's what I'm using. I really enjoy wrapping gifts, and I know from experience working in department stores that it's something a lot of people really struggle with and seem to resent. So hopefully I can teach you some tricks to make the process a bit easier and more enjoyable. I like to make my own gift wrap because it's a more environmentally friendly option than most of the wrap that's currently available in shops which either can't be recycled because it's covered in glitter or can't be recycled because it's lined with plastic to make it stronger. If you're decorating your own paper, you can also personalise the gift wrap to the recipient of your gift, which is always a nice touch. My first tip and easily the most important one is to put everything you're wrapping in a box if it's not already in one. It's much easier to wrap a box than it is to wrap an oddly shaped pile of stuff. If you've got some space left in the box, you can stuff it with some more of your scrunched up newsprint to stop the things inside moving around. Because my newsprint is very thin, I'm making my wrap a bit more opaque and stronger by adding a second layer of plain newsprint underneath. My box is pretty large, so I joined the two sheets of lining newsprint together with some regular sticky tape, and then I'm going to join my two decorated sheets together a little more carefully using some double-sided tape. The trick with double sided tape is to stick it down to one sheet with the backing still attached and then pull this away when you have everything in place and are ready to stick. Of course you don't need to use double sided tape if you don't have any, you can stick your sheets together with a glue stick or use any kind of tape that you have. When you've joined any paper together if you needed to, it's time to wrap your box. Flip your paper over so that the printed side is facing away from you, and then place your box upside down on the sheet of wrapping paper. Placing the box upside down will make it so that the seam of your paper is on the bottom of the box. This doesn't matter too much, but it does make wrapping the sides of the box a little easier, and it also looks neater. If you want to, you can line the box up really precisely so that the edge of your paper meets the edge of the box when you fold it over. 
After I've folded the first edge in, I like to secure that edge to the box with a little bit of tape before I fold up the next edge. It's also a good practice to add a crisp seam to each edge with your fingers as you go so that the paper fits really well to the box. This just looks nicer and it also makes the rest of the folds much easier. When I'm ready to fold the second side over, I check where the edge is going to land, then I place my double-sided tape where it needs to go, pull away the protective layer and then stick the second edge down. If you're using a lining layer of paper like I am, make sure you stick down the decorative paper as well. Folding up the sides neatly is probably the trickiest bit of the whole process. There are a number of ways you can do this, but my method is to check the length of your sides, and if it's longer than the height of your box, trim away any excess with some scissors. Fold the top edge down first, adding a seam with your fingers along the top, and secure this down to the box with a little bit of tape. Fold the sides in one at a time, again adding creases to all the edges, and push the paper right into the corner and add a crisp edge on the angled bit of the paper that forms. Fold the sides in one at a time, again securing them with a little bit of tape to keep everything neat and in place. When it's time to fold up the bottom flap, you can neaten the leading edge by folding it over and then put down a few pieces of double-sided tape and fold the whole thing up. If you're not using double-sided tape, just place your tape as neatly as you can on the outside. While I'm finishing up here, it seems like a good time to remind you that I have a Patreon and you can go and support it. I've just started my Patreon properly this year in 2020 and I've got a bunch of goals there for both fun and practical things, like buying some technical equipment to help with the production of these videos and every contribution helps no matter how small. If you get some value out of these videos and you want to give me the equivalent of the smallest candle in this box each month, that would be brilliant. I've got a whole variety of reward levels set up, so head on over to Patreon and check them out. You can finish off your wrapped present in any way that you like. I'm using a double strand of yarn and tying it all the way around the box into a little bow. If you go with this option, make sure to measure out the string against your box and then add a little bit of extra length so that you've got enough there to tie the bow. Strings and ribbons look really nice, but they can also be strategic because you can use them to cover up any seams in your paper if you had to join multiple pieces together like I did.
And that's it. Now you know how to wrap a present, even if you have no fancy wrapping paper in your house. If you're interested in making a stamp out of corks and your own stamp padding, like I also used in this video, you're in luck. I've just made videos about both of those processes as well, and have included links in the description. Please like, subscribe, share and leave a comment if you enjoyed this video. All the materials I used are listed in the description, along with links to my Patreon page, my website, my Facebook page, Instagram, and some affiliate links to a couple of good art stores where you can buy materials. Thanks for watching. Cheers.